Section. Introduction. In this section, we discuss modular addition, a crucial operation in number theory and cryptography. The process is straightforward. Given a set of elements, we compute their sum modulo a certain number. However, we find it surprising that machine learning models struggle with this task, even though they can handle more complex mathematical operations. Improving machine learning performance in modular addition could significantly benefit research, especially in cryptography, where modular arithmetic plays a vital role in problems like learning with errors, which underpins post-quantum cryptosystems. To address this challenge, we propose new methods that enable machine learning models to perform modular addition effectively for various sizes of elements and moduli, specifically up to 256 elements and a modulus of 3,329. Our approach outperforms previous efforts that only manage to sum a few elements with smaller moduli. We identify three main limitations in existing models, insufficient training data diversity, a lack of inductive bias for modular addition, and inappropriate loss functions. To overcome these issues, we enhance the training data by ensuring a wider variety of elements are included. We introduce an angular embedding that represents inputs and outputs as points on a unit circle, which helps the model better understand modular addition. Additionally, we design a new loss function that discourages the model from getting stuck in local minima. The rest of the paper is structured as follows. We review related work on machine learning and modular arithmetic, outline the limitations of previous studies, present our results on modular arithmetic problems, conduct ablation studies on our methodology, apply our methods to other functions, and discuss future research directions. In our review of related work, we note that previous studies have explored whether machine learning models can learn modular arithmetic. The best existing methods have only managed to sum a small number of elements with limited moduli. We aim to scale this to larger numbers of elements and moduli, driven by the needs of number theory and cryptography. Our methodology involves training models to add elements modulo a given number, and we propose several improvements to the training process. We generate training data using two distributions to ensure diversity and to help the model learn better. We also implement an angular embedding to enhance the model's understanding of modular arithmetic and use an encoder-only transformer model to capture relationships between input elements effectively. Finally, we address the issue of models converging on local minima by using a custom loss function that combines mean squared error with an additional term to prevent the model from predicting the origin, thus encouraging it to learn the correct modular relationships. Section Summary In this section, we discuss the challenges machine learning models face in performing modular addition, despite their success in other mathematical tasks, and propose new methods to enhance their performance by improving training data diversity, introducing an angular embedding for better representation, and designing a custom loss function to prevent convergence at local minima. Our approach significantly outperforms previous efforts, enabling models to handle larger sets of elements and moduli, which is crucial for applications in number theory and cryptography. Section. Model Training and Evaluation. In this section, we implement the proposed changes and train models to sum a number of elements modulo a given value. For parameter selection, we experiment with different sizes of elements, specifically 20, 50, 100, and 256, to observe trends as the number of elements increases. Since we are interested in applications in cryptography, we use prime numbers for our modulus, which are commonly utilized in that field. We also tested a non-prime modulus of 1000 and found similar results, as detailed in the appendix. Our chosen moduli include 257, 769, and 3329, with 3329 being used in the real-world cryptosystem crystals Kyber. We select 20 elements and a modulus of 257 as our base case for experiments, ensuring a sufficiently large sample space for model generalization. For the training procedure, we conduct all experiments using Python and PyTorch. We train transformer models with a hidden dimension of 256, 4 attention heads, and 12 encoding layers on batches of 256 examples. 
we utilize the atom optimizer with a learning rate of 0.0001, an initial warm-up phase of 1000 optimization steps, and cosine scheduling. These parameters were determined through extensive hyperparameter searches, as noted in the appendix. Our experiments run on 8 V100 GPUs, each with 32 gigabytes of memory, and we train the models for 30 epochs, processing 2.56 million examples per epoch per GPU, resulting in approximately 30 hours of training time per GPU. For evaluation, we create a separate test set of 100,000 examples that is distinct from the training set, drawn uniformly from the specified range. To assess model performance, we take the final hidden state of the transformer and pass it through a linear layer to produce outputs. We then project these outputs onto the unit circle to compare the model's predictions against the actual values. We compute several metrics, including the mean squared error, MSE, of angle predictions, accuracy percentage, and accuracy with a margin of error relative to the modulus. These metrics help us evaluate how closely the predicted angles match the true values and whether the model captures the approximate behavior of the function. Our key results show that our methods allow models to learn modular addition of up to 256 elements modulo values as high as 3329. We present the best results across various sizes and moduli in a table. All results come from encoder-only transformer models trained with specific data distributions and a custom loss function. Overall, the MSE is close to zero across different sizes and moduli, indicating that the model learns effectively. Notably, the accuracy with a small margin of error is nearly 100% for all models, meaning that most predictions are very close to the correct answers. However, accuracy tends to decline as the number of elements in the modulus increase, particularly when the modulus increases while the number of elements remains constant. In comparing our results to prior work, we trained a multi-layer perceptron and observed that it learns modular addition through a process called grokking where generalization occurs after memorization. We also implemented similar approaches without our specific adjustments and found that their models did not learn the task effectively, achieving MSEs of 1.0 and accuracies below 1%. In contrast, our methods achieved an accuracy of 99.9% .9 on the same problem. Unlike previous studies, we did not observe grokking in our models, as we used a very small fraction of the possible data allowing our models to learn gradually without overfitting. Section Summary In this section, we detail our model training and evaluation process for summing n elements mod q, experimenting with various parameters and using prime moduli relevant to cryptography. Our transformer models achieved near zero mean squared error and approximately 100% accuracy within a 0.5% margin, demonstrating effective learning of modular addition significantly outperforming prior approaches. Section. Which factors most help models learn modular arithmetic? In this section, we investigate how our various methods, such as diverse training data distribution, a transformer model with angular embedding, and a custom loss function, impact the ability of models to learn modular arithmetic. Our aim is to understand the performance improvements each method offers compared to their combined effect. First, we examine the effect of training data distribution. We find that sparsity is crucial. We create diverse training datasets by sampling elements defined by specific probability distributions. We analyze how different sparse distributions, combined with a certain interval distribution, influence model performance. We measure two key metrics, the accuracy of the models and the kullback liebler divergence, which indicates how similar the training and testing datasets are. Our results show a significant accuracy drop when using the default sampling compared to other distributions. Specifically, models achieve 0% accuracy without modifying the training dataset sparsity but exceed 85% accuracy when we do. This strongly suggests that models require exposure to sparse training examples to generalize effectively. Next, we observe that models trained on distributions that produce very low or very high kullback liebler divergence perform poorly. For instance, models trained with the default distribution have identical training and testing distributions, 
resulting in 0% accuracy. In contrast, a uniform sparsity function diverges too much from the test distribution, leading to lower accuracy. Distributions with fewer sparse training elements, like certain inverse functions, yield the best performance. We also validate our assumption that models learn simpler examples first. By training a model on a specific dataset and monitoring its performance, we find that it initially excels with sparse examples and gradually improves on more complex ones. This indicates that models first grasp simpler sums before tackling more complicated ones, reinforcing our approach of using sparse sampling for training data. Furthermore, we assess the impact of including training samples generated from another distribution. Our findings reveal that using a combination of specific sparse data and interval data significantly boosts performance compared to using sparse data alone. Models trained with this combination perform much better on challenging samples, particularly those at the extremes of the distribution. Finally, we explore whether models can learn effectively from fewer samples. We train models with varying sample sizes from a specific sparse distribution and find that accuracy peaks at a certain number of samples. Even with a limited dataset, models can still achieve relatively high accuracy. Interestingly, having too many samples can actually decrease performance. We decide to use the optimal sample size for our subsequent experiments. Section Summary In this section, we investigate how diverse training data distributions, specifically sparsity in training examples, significantly enhance models' ability to learn modular arithmetic, with optimal performance observed at mid-range KL divergence values. We also find that incorporating additional training samples from specific distributions improves accuracy, particularly on complex tasks, while excessive data can lead to performance declines. Section Beyond Modular Addition in this section, we explore whether our methods allow machine learning models to learn other modular arithmetic functions beyond just addition. We propose that two-layer multi-layer perceptrons, or MLPs, can only learn functions represented in a specific way, but we introduce a new class of functions that falls outside this limitation. Specifically, we define a function that involves summing the inputs raised to certain powers and then squaring that sum plus an additional term based on one of the inputs. To test our approach, we train models to predict outputs from these functions using the same setup as before, which includes an encoder-only transformer model, a modified data distribution, input angular embedding, and a custom loss function. We also incorporate positional embedding in the transformer since the functions depend on the order of the input sequence. Our results indicate that for a specific case with 20 inputs and a modulus of 257, we achieve over 90% accuracy. This finding suggests that our methods can be applied to a broader range of modular arithmetic, paving the way for further research.